Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Ingus and I'm from IGS Electronics and today we're going to be checking out another Mitsubishi card, analog card, and that is a analog input card, but this time for temperature, call, uh, temperature controls and it's called FX3U 4AD TCADP. It's mainly designed for K and J type temper thermal couples. So we're going to be checking out the wiring, how to set it up, and then we uh, jump on the computer and have a look how to set up and how to read those values. So if you wanted to check out all the other cards that we checked out as well, there's going to be those are going to be. Say, I'll leave the, leave the links in the description below for analog input and for analog output that we did already. And uh, so yeah, any related manuals, related videos, anything else I think would benefit you in a possible way is going to be in the description below. So let's get started. <music> There you go, so all wired in. So first thing we are gonna look at is what do we need to get that this uh, opera, uh, card operational. You do need uh, the adapter card for it, for a uh, FX3S PLC. And uh, the, there's a different adapter card, uh, adapter, card, adapter card for FX3U and FX3G. So uh, definitely uh, if you are using those PLCs to check out what those cards are. So my one is FX3S CNV-ADP. So uh, we did uh, look into a lot more in depth for how to set this whole system up in here in the first video for the uh, analog input card. So definitely check that out in the description below. There'll be I'll leave that link in there. And as we added this card, so we, now we got this uh, unit in here, and let's talk through the uh, wiring and the block itself. As you can see down there, you have 24 watt plus 24 minus and earth as is where you're going to be putting on your uh, uh, power to it so uh, 24 volt dc power then you have two dots in here and that is for nothing so pretty much do not use and if you are going to be using a j type of a uh, thermocouple you do need to make sure that uh, that uh, these two guys in here as you can see in here j type are linked out so the card knows what it needs to do and plus you need to do the switching inside software as well which we're going to look at in a minute and then you have a uh, L1 uh, plus and L1 minus, and then you're all the way to L4 minus and L4 plus. Those are uh, four channels for, for uh, thermocouples. Do make sure if you're using a K type, uh, then you use all four for K. You can't use one J and one K. You cannot do that. You just can be able to do one uh, type per card. So uh, do make sure for the J that's closed. So uh, yeah, so and do make sure that you use only a case for for one card and a J's for the other card if you wish to, but you can't mix them up. So I haven't talked that through. So let's jump on the computer and let's see how to set this up. There we go. So now we are in front of the computer. The first thing we are going to be uh, looking at is manual uh, how to set this up. So because uh, there's uh, quite a important information do we need. So first thing we are going to look at it, as you can see in here, only one TC ADP unit can be connected to FX3 series 2. Do make sure that is the case. And from there on, we're going to carry on in uh, general specifications. You can read up in things and how the what is what. But the most important one, we'll have a look at this guy in here. So the, the performance specifications, you can see the K-type, it sort of gives you the ranges in here for the Fahrenheit, for the centigrade, and also how that's going to be represented in digital values. As you can see, that's how it represents. So if you want to look at that one, and also you can see the resolution as well for the Fahrenheit and for the Celsius. So from there on, we're going to crack on to the wiring. As you can see, wiring in here. And then more specifically, we're going to come in here. It's a thermocouple wiring. As you can see, wiring of the K thermocouple channel here, the versus type J, has to be open. So it even says that it is not necessary to connect the line to the JD terminal, leave these terminals disconnected. So uh, do make sure that is for your K type of uh, thermocouple. And from there on, let's continue to, we're gonna skip this for now because you're gonna go a bit more specific. And here the selection of thermocouple units in here, M8280, once you turn it on, is, uh, this bit, it will read, what the, what's it gonna read, the centigrade or Fahrenheit? Remember, the digital represent, the digital value representation is different for Fahrenheit and centigrade. So uh, for our FX3S card, it is, for the first card, it is this bit. So, uh, 
Uh, then obviously in here by May 1281 you would need to select uh, what, if you're using the JTAP you need to make sure the MA1281 bit 4 RFX3 series first card is on and obviously you can see down here for the second card will be a 91 for the 3G and then so on for the uh, 3U series PLC so that's how we select the, uh, the types and in here we are finding out where the temperature measurement is stored and it's stored in a D8280 for the first channel and all uh, and off um, and they're on one two and three for respective channels after that so this is and then it's obviously for the fx 3 g and this is the fx 3 u how it's all stored in here so uh, that's the first we're going to look at and another thing in here before we crack on with this uh, do you, there's your average timing so basically much this uh, this bit in here you can use a d8284 i'm going to show that in a minute is where you can uh, select uh, uh, the time period and uh pretty, pretty much within that time period uh, period the value is going to be uh, uh, the average value is going to be uh, displayed rather than having a uh, number flash flashing around a constant reading it will just uh, take average value from the time period you have uh, selected which i'm going to show in a minute how that's set up so and uh, from there on if you want to look at as well the error statuses these are very important which i keep forgetting i forgot to, to address them in the last two videos for the cards this is where your error states are stored at the 8288 bit in there and so uh and from there on a sub bit in in, in here so it, i call that sub bit so people some people to call it differently as you can see uh, there will be b1 b2 b3 and this is all the errors are going to be in there and so this is how they are sort of going to be a uh, represented in in here as you can see how you reset and things like that you can check that out in a d8288 so having said that so now we're going through the manual so you sort of which sort of gives you a good understanding how to go through the manual let's uh, jump on to the actual uh, software and to do that, let's open up GXWorks 2, a uh, new PLC, and uh, let's go with the M8000, so always on bit, and remember we need to now use the move instruction, or function, move function we're going to say uh, move the data from where we're going to revert D8, uh, 8280 remember from the manual where we checked out in here this is where our first channel data has been stored and from there on we need to transfer it somewhere so we're going to say to d0 why not so i haven't done that so our first uh, diagram is done so the only thing is now we let's load it into the plc And have a look at it, what sort of reading we're getting it. I haven't done that, so let's put in a monitoring mode. And as you can see, in my workshop is at the moment roughly about 22 degrees. So that's what that value represents down there. So let's put this into something uh, cold because my uh, thermocouple simulator is not here yet. So uh, we're going to have to leave with what we've got in here. So I'll put that in uh, something really icy. Cold. As you can see, the value is dropping quite uh, fast. So pretty much that. So as the temperature drops, it will, it will go down. That should go down about 4 degrees. But anyway, so that's pretty serious. Sort of more or less giving you the gist of uh, uh, how would, uh, the reading would work. So now it's out of the cold. So it shuts in a minute start going back up. But the one thing is you can see the numbers are jumping up around quite a bit. We don't like that. So the next thing we can do, this is where the averaging time comes in. And for that, let's leave the monitoring mode. So... Uh, so remove that one for a little bit at the moment so uh if we go in the manual in here as you can see the averaging time for the channel one is in uh, d8284 how does that work we sort of have to give him a uh some form of time a time a window how to read the the values and uh, no, take the average value from that time window so you can see the initial value stands at k64 interesting hmm 
So it's still jumping around like that. So what we're going to do, we, we can stabilize that number. So uh, how that works. Let's take another M8000. M8000. And then we need to tell the time. We need to create a move, in, a move function. And in there you can you need to say a uh, move what time so let's say we're gonna go for k 150 so 150 times uh, a uh, I think it's 100 milliseconds don't quote me on it so uh, and uh, where do we move it so in that data register so which is d8284 let's double check that was the right number yes so once you're okay, so now it's going to use that uh, window, collect all the data that's been going on there, and just uh, take a uh, display to us at the averaging average number in that time window. So let's F afford that and I put that and write to the PLC. There we go. Thank you. Close. Close. And let's go into monitor mode. Uh, it's still jumping around quite a bit. So we want to stabilize that a little bit more. So let's leave that. So let's make that window quite substantially bigger. Let's double that up for 300. Just to give you a good idea how this works. Uh, right to the PLC, so execute, yep. There we go. Put that back, put us back on, there we go. Glues, glues. Uh, let's have a look at it now. And here we go. So 300 is, meh. Yeah. It's no longer, as you can see, the numbers, numbers are, are jumping around a lot, lot less. And of course, the bigger the time window. You can set that up even to whatever, but sort of gives you the just an idea how uh, that would uh, work. So, uh, before we go, I quickly show you some some of uh, practical problems that can happen. So, what I'm going to do in here, I'm going to remove uh, the thermocouple. So, uh, which one did I unscrew? This one. As you can see, thermocouple are removed. We show ten thousand one hundred. So, let's see what happens when you put the thermocouple other way around. So don't worry, nothing's gonna happen to the card. It's just gonna read, read it backwards. So you can see the numbers are all over the place, and uh, they are not not right. And when I try to put something hot on it, it will go down. You see, it just go, reads backwards. It sort of gives you an idea if you have a problem uh, with direction and things like that. So once the thermocouple is not there, or the direction, so you now know what those things are gonna be. So you can see the thermocouple has uh, been removed and it shows you 10,000 uh, pretty much the thermocouple is down there. You can actually uh, set this uh, to display on uh, some form of screen to say that, well, thermocouple is dead or not working or out of ranges and things like that. So these things you can uh, do, which I already show that in, in the manual in, ooh, no, that one, that one in here. In the uh, menu error status is how you if you want them to be displayed. So that, ladies and gentlemen, will do for this video. Hopefully that gives you a good understanding how this card works, how to set it up, and how to wire it. So uh, for uh, next video, we're going to be looking at a uh, 3A card, the uh, analog, digital, analog, uh, two analog input and one output card. So we're going to be checking that card out. So other than that, ladies and gentlemen, if you like the video, smash that like. If you didn't, smash this like. Comment below what you like, what you don't like. And if you want to see anything else, um, when it comes down to Mitsubishi, as Mitsubishi has got a lot of product. So do let me know, and I'll be sure to look into it to see if we, what it can do for you. So uh, that'll do. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.